They wrote a letter to the dome. This uh uh, uh yeah th yeah cuz that's uh this the three eight one one first show I know you don't know nothing about no three eight one one four area code man. Nah, shoot, I know about three what. What's your what's yours? Three eight zero two eight. Cordova, we got Cordova, throw them C's up. You already know. <laughs> dope, dope, dope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Dirty dope, yeah, I already know. Hey, this uh nigga, I never did bit when I when I was younger when I was in the hood, I never been to Cordova, nigga, till I got older. Man. <laughs> I ain't had no purpose to go to Cordova. Niggas didn't come close to Cordova until Adventure River was out there. Who? Adventure River, you don't remember Adventure River? Nah. That's probably before I came here from Chicago. Nah. What year was it? What year? Nah, Adventure River probably gone. It made down here about 90. Yeah, about 94, probably. Yeah, that was, I wasn't here then. I was still in Chicago then. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, that's a good way to start the show, y'all. Hey, y'all. Welcome to another episode of the 3811 Fuss Show. I'm comedian Ambrose uh, Jones. Got a special guest in the house. This is my homeboy who uh, took me under his wing when I first got started in comedy, man. Funny as hell, man. I always looked up to the guy. Welcome to the show, Cletus Allen Cuz, y'all. What up, y'all? What it do? <laughs> what it do? We on the 38114 show. Been trying to get him on for the longest, but he been out there doing his thing and shit. I been out there chasing the Rona. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with you, man? Hey, man, just trying to make it another day. Well, uh, slide over just a little bit. Where, uh, let everybody know, man, where you from, man. Where, no, way? my way. A little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, let everybody know, man, where you from, man. Where it all started out for you, From man. Memphis, Tennessee. Started off in Pisgah, E. The county. That's way oh, out there, that's, boy. That's you, so you, far out there, boy. he had a good family growing up right hey, there. Man, don't you hate me? <laughs> hey, that sound like you had your mama and daddy in the household. You see, that's what I don't understand, man. Niggas always glorifying me. Like, like, like growing up good, something wrong with that shit or something. You had a good no, life. No, I wasn't saying it like that. I was just saying it sounded like. Nah, I, I, nah, I'm just niggas just love that shit, man. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, know, yeah. The, the hood is the hood is supposed to be where it's at, and uh, the, 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 I guess the suburbs is yeah. It's we bad. Love, it's we bad love to live shit. good. You had mama and dad in the house growing up. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah. That, 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 that's foundation right there, man. You know what I'm saying? That's what I wanted for my son. But hey, did you have a grandma and granddad? Yeah, but See, I, I ain't had no granddad, so nigga, we eat. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to act like, man, you had one of me. You had okay. a mama and a dad. I guess if you mama. look at it like that from that perspective, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty eat, sure man. your grandma and granddad told you the same thing my mom and dad told me. <laughs> you, know, you, you just, you just that, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> what school you went to, man? I went to Houston. Hmm? Houston. There you go. He called out some, yeah, he did. <laughs> Houston High. Graduated from there that time? No, I went. I graduated from Rossville Christian Academy. He went to see. see no, no, see now. You see how he put his hands in Christian. I went to a Christian school. That was a Christian yes, school. Yes, they did. How was it? Was it predominantly white or what? Or mixed? It was all white, man. We was really? all. Man, my school, it was only five black people that went to the school, nigga. And we was the starting five for the basketball team. For real? Yeah, it was that was you. Time. Who else? Me, the dude named Chris Anderson, the dude named Lily, the dude named Carlos. And uh, now it was a white dude named Paul. He was cold as hell. A dude named Jerry. But yeah. Who put Mama. you? Uh, who put you in? Mama said, "I want to put you in Christian Christian school." I just want to play basketball. Oh, you play ball? Yeah. Nigga, yeah. I ain't know that. What yeah. position yeah. you play? Superman, shoot power forward. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Shout look out to you, Rose, man. <laughs> Everybody that know me know I was hey, cold. I never did know you that. Say, hey, I don't care if you look. If you know me back from back in the day. Don't write nothing <laughs> up under these comments, man. You know, Nigga, you play ball? Yeah, for how many ball. years? One. Nigga, <laughs> 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 say one. Nigga, only one year. What was that, ninth grade? I played my 12th grade year. 12th grade year. That was yeah. it for that? That was it, What happened? I graduated. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. That conditioning stuff just wasn't there. It didn't go right for me. Too much before. running, too much man. running out. I told my dad, when I go to college, I ain't doing none of that bullshit. No <laughs> I'm just going to... Go to school. Oh, too much running. Because I know when you play basketball, nigga, y'all got to run cross country. See, I ran cross country and I played basketball. Yes. So I really was tired. Shit. Yeah, I told my son, my son, he he getting into, I'm like, yeah, boy, you got a left hand jump. You want to play ball? He was like, yeah, think about it. I said, nah, nigga, you know you all going to have to run, nigga. <laughs> Dude, that nigga thought about it. He was like, you know what, I might stick the band. 
<laughs> you, you try to talk about all the expensive sports and nah, shit. Nah, I want him to play ball, but I know the nigga, he ain't finna run like that. Because I did have him in track. He ain't like track, so, yeah. But, yeah, I ain't know you play ball. So what you do after high school? I went to uh, University of Memphis. Hey, damn, I, I went to the University of Memphis, got into their theater program. And, uh, theater program and uh, mm-hmm. university? For real? What you majoring in? Communication. Okay. You went, how many years you go there? About three and a half. Three and a half? And then I... I got that gig with Steve Harvey, and the rest was history. Hold on, you were doing comedy when you was in college? Hell yeah. Nigga, I knew you, and I didn't even know you was in college then, nigga. Well, nigga, that's your fault. You probably just, <laughs> just assumed hey, I wasn't in college, because hey, none of your friends was in college. That's the nigga. thing, bro. You don't never know, like, some shit be coming out of this show. I'm like, nigga, I ain't know you played, Bobby. Know your ass for damn that shit 13, 15 years. Man, I was cold for a little bit. Hold on. Now, day I was going to ask you how you got into coming. So, how you get into, uh, when you start stand-up then? No, actually, real talk, I started stand-up. It really transitioned to the only thing available. Like, I really started in theater. And when... Theater, in college? No, I was doing theater when I was, like, a teenager. You okay, high school, like, school. Yeah, yeah, I was doing it, like... Plays. My folks had me in like all them church plays, and I was doing like the National Baptist Convention plays and stuff. The big old big plays. Yeah, like you it perform was like in front of big crowds. Yeah, yeah, it was arenas full of people. Oh, yeah, like you know a whole convention full of every church from mm-hmm. the one city. You know, one of them things. And uh, man, I started just doing those plays and really getting into it. And then once I got too old to do that, it was just nothing to do. You know, like when I was doing those plays, like that was the first time. I could really like see that I had a, I had something with making people laugh. You right. know what I mean? So man, like, you were from the big crowd starting off early. That's what messed me up, dog. Shoot, when you go backwards, it's painful. Oh, then you start doing comedy. You got to go in a coffee shop with three people. That, but I'm like, you're like, nigga, I'm a superstar already. Man, it was just comedy was like, I don't know. I guess you know when you do comedy all your life. Some some comedians. They already was born. They was the people that was making their family laugh all the time. Yeah. They knew they was a comedian or whatever. But, man, like, I don't know. It's just something about transitioning from that theater and then, like, not having that group or those people to make laugh, looking for it and searching for it. And then I found uh, Prescott Spot. Prescott had a little comedy club. Men in How? Called, yeah, Funny Man Comedy Spot. Funny Man Hot Wing. Shout out like, to Prescott. So this your first time hitting the actual comedy stage? Yeah, it's my first time on a stage doing stand up by myself. Who told you to go do it? Q Quincy. If y'all I didn't know, know that. That's how, that's how me and Quincy became friends. Oh, so he was doing it before you? Yeah, that's how I me. Mean. Actually, Quincy, I didn't know that was his first night going up, but I was in there <laughs> with this little, you know, my uh, that my girl at the time. Yeah. And we in there, and I see Q go up. And Q go up from the back. He was cooking chicken, and that nigga just walked from cooking. He <laughs> he had served us our chicken. Then they was like, all right, our next comedian. Was. Quincy, this nigga come yeah. on stage from the chicken. I'm like, this nigga was just serving us the chicken. He just served me my goddamn And so food. I was like, if he can go up there, I know I can go up there. So I would have asked him. He was like, yeah, man, i see if I can get you up. And Q got me on stage. Q that was night? the first person that got, yeah. What you do? First guy. What you do? Did you rip when you got up there? I ain't do bad. I thought the joke was funny as hell, man. But it, it was a little. We always <laughs> think it's funny. <laughs> it might have been a little too vulgar for the joke coming out, man. You I remember? Did, I did a joke about, uh, it was gross, man. I don't know. It, it, that's not mature. I the can't game. even think of you doing no gross joke. Yeah, this. it was a gross joke, man. I was talking about, uh, it, was, it was a joke about doing it to a girl and she riding you mm-hmm. and uh, leaving the doo-doo stain in the bed. That's what I was <laughs> That's what the joke was about. I was like, his first like, time on stage, like, <laughs> this nigga doing a doo doo joke. I did a doo doo stage joke. My first joke, I was like, yeah, man, don't you know what she on you with? She uh, she smushing your booty cheeks and the covers get stuck in there. And you just left the doo doo stain in bed, but you don't want her to know you left doo doo stain in bed. <laughs> so you had flipped her over and you try to put her on the stage and make her think she left the doo doo stain. It was, <laughs> it Hold was up. funny. Did that happen for real? No, nigga, I was just oh, making okay. a joke, nigga. I guess I don't know if the shit happened. What made you real. think of that? It happened for real? I don't know what made me think of that. <laughs> I just remember that. Nigga, that had to happen for real I, for you to say I, something I, like that, nigga. I 
<laughs> my first joke. I'm a comedian, nigga. That yeah. had to happen for real. It's and, a, and, you know what? Well, sometimes when a comedian makes a joke, it's, <laughs> it, it has a it has a brief moment of truth. Yeah, to it. he, he left his shit stain on the like, cover. That's the look. Yeah, that, that might have been a little <laughs> look, and that, the joke might have been created for me just laying in the bed, sliding off my own shit. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, I don't know, nigga. When you when you young, young, mm-hmm. fucking up. But yeah, that was my first joke. You remember your first joke? That was at Comedy Tennessee. Yeah, I ain't get up. I did open mic. I ain't get up the first night. And then the second night, the second week I went up, I went up. And I just heard a couple people laughing, and then that was it. Mm. So you did all right. So when was your second time? You went back up there the following week? Yeah, I went back up there, and that's when I, I had created the Junior Man joke. And once I, one thing about comedy is, I feel like once. Classic, that damn Junior Man. Yeah, joke. that joke, that joke. So you did that your life. second time on stage? Yeah, down there. <laughs> that was enjoying my career because it was, it was all true. It was all based on my real family. Yeah, your cousin, your gay cousin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that Julia man. No. I know you ain't acting for. Yeah, mm-hmm. that gentleman class. So did you write it up? Did you write it down before you went on stage the second time? Or you just went up there and just. You know what? When I was younger, I wrote all my jokes down. Have you ever noticed the the younger you were as a comedian, you were way more ambitious. You yeah. write everything down. Now you just like ah. I, I still, I still gotta. I, even know. though if I, I get up there and do it, and I still gotta write it down and get it off my head. I write down shit that I know I'm not gonna remember. That was just one of those funny, brief for the moments during the day type thing. Like you know, if you don't write it down right then, you'll forget yeah. it. Yeah. That's what makes a comedian. Yeah. It's the work. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot. If you're a comedian, you're supposed to come across enough funny shit throughout the day to where you can get one good joke. Nigga, yeah, I got no books full of shit I ain't never used. Yeah, you're supposed to get one good joke out of the day. But <laughs> when you don't write it down, that's what that's what separates you from the greats. So after that, you just start going up there. We got that then. Yeah, pretty much. But that's one thing about people who got theater as a background. Y'all already got that stage presence. So yeah, y'all yeah. get started doing comedy, y'all don't got to worry about getting used to the crowd or doing all y'all really got to do is just work on y'all jokes and y'all good. Yeah, theater definitely helped bring out that, it, it throw that, it, you know, get rid of that fear for mm-hmm. it. You know, a lot of people deal with fear. That's their first thing when they get on the stage. They got to conquer that fear first. And I think theater helped you get over that fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and good. That, that might have made, that made stand up a little easier. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you run into me. I started at Comedy Tennessee, and I think uh, I was going up there Wednesday, and that's when you saw me for the first time. That was open mic night, right? You was the first black comedian I had seen coming in, Judge. Since, for real? That's me. Hell yeah. That's <laughs> I, was like, I gotta be friends with this. And nigga, that was like oh what, oh seven? I started in oh seven, so it had to be like oh seven, oh eight. Man, how do y'all remember dates? I don't remember. I started in oh seven. Like, I, I know when I started. I started in my twenties. <laughs> 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 nigga, I started. So yeah, I'm in there, I'm in Comedy Tennessee. I think you was hosting. Mm-hmm. And your brother was in there, I think both of y'all had a girl in there. I don't know. Probably so. No one y'all niggas probably did. Yeah, I remember. And so, actually the girl that I had in there, she was a star now. Who was that? Uh, remember, uh, she uh, she doing all them commercials in Hollywood or something. Uh, April. Mm-hmm. April Hill. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, y'all was in there. You was up there ripping, and I'm sitting back. And you call your brother on stage. This nigga ain't even no comedian. You call Jeremiah on stage. Yeah. <laughs> this nigga went up there and ripped. This nigga <laughs> ain't even no comedian. I'm sitting there like. And then I go up there, I bomb. <laughs> 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 but I think that's the day you came up to me. You was like, hey, man, you funny, man. You know, I'm going to uh, take you down here to come do my spot at the Onyx mm-hmm. on Thursday, right. nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that was my first big crowd, black folks, sophisticated, bougie folks. Yeah. And bombed like a motherfucker. I tell you everybody, I bombed four weeks straight at that motherfucker right there. I just couldn't get it. Man. <laughs> Hey, you took it right though. <laughs> and, out of everybody that came to Onyx, Ambrose took it right. Like what? if you what? got booed, boo and getting booed is supposed to make you stronger. And sometimes it just make you hate the nigga that didn't get booed. Man. <laughs> but it's supposed to make you stronger. It made this nigga strong. From performing in front of white folks and coming to them black folks, like, I just cannot get this shit. Man. I used to see your ass in the back when they started talking over me. Shit, I see your ass in the back like this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <Okay>. bros didn't care though. <laughs> this nigga did not Hey, go. I came back the following week. Same goddamn time. I said, damn! And then I remember that third week before I bombed again. You said, hey man, you d- stop coming up here just nigga saying your jokes, nigga. You d- nigga, say something about the room. Say some present shit. Say something to get them 
tuned in, then get into your jokes. And I think, uh, so when I came back, that fourth time I did good, that's when T.I. had that song, You Can Have Whatever You Like. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, I came joke, up yeah. to that song and I made a little joke. Talk about it. Yeah, yeah you can have, yeah, yeah E&J on, I just hollered out a lot of cheap <laughs> shit. And they laughed and then I got into the rest of my shit and I remember me doing good. And I remember folks standing up in that motherfucker like, Woo! <laughs> Hey. You, seen, nigga, you was about the excitedest person I ever seen when you got them laughs. You was like at the Onyx. Oh, <laughs> shit, I done made nigga. it. I done made it. Boy, and then Cubs get back up. That nigga was like, damn, nigga. Amber been at home writing on his bunk bed with a with a nightlight, nigga. He was like, I'm going to get your ass. Yeah, you got Found it. Found that motherfucker, boy. Now, why you take it like that and finally, finally get the crowd? But everybody else that did Onyx, so you know who you are. Uh, I had Ashanti up here. She was telling me that was her first time. Ashanti handled Onyx good. Ashanti was she like, said she bombed the first time. She bombed all the time. Yeah, she bombed all. Yeah, she told me that. Yeah, she bombed all the time. She kept coming back though. Yeah, but she handled it well. She came back all the time. But Ashanti wasn't letting that shit bother her. Man, I remember that night and people stood up clapping. I was like, I found a got that ass. So you know the difference between Ashanti bombing and another comedian bombing. What? And Shanti Bobby, Shanti still had a good job, a good life going for her. She worked for the IRS yeah, and shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you, a person like that could bomb and go home today, how they lights and stuff. But when you a comic struggling, you ain't got no place and to you live. Bomb, you and you bomb, you gotta go back. You bomb, and you was hoping this was gonna be your pickout. That bomb hit a whole nother type of. Woo, life. boy, that and shit. It, it means you still ain't going no goddamn way. That's what it means. <laughs> I can't even get my own city behind me. <laughs> you have a bomb? In Memphis? I'm going to tell the truth. <laughs> you, the truth. For real? One time, though. Where? Like, everybody else say, say it ain't a lot. But Where? one time, I did a, uh, I got a phone call. And this is a good example. <laughs> uh, I never this, heard this, this story. This is a good example of you should always look the booking all the way through. Like, research your booking. A person called me from a church, and they said they wanted me to do a show for that youth group. And I was like, okay, I'll do a show for you group. But I'm thinking there's people like 15 to maybe 27, that type of you group. Nigga, I get to this this show. It ain't even in the church. It's in the gymnasium, on the court, on the basketball court. Damn. They got me performing up under the basketball goal. And my audience consists of age group between three and maybe seven or eight. Damn. Man, I'm in there with all these little kids in there. They're telling these jokes. I'm like, it's so my grandma had Alzheimer's. Anybody grandma got Alzheimer's? So one of them, <laughs> one, one, all so one of them kids uh, raised their hand. They was like, what's Alzheimer's? I don't know what that is. <laughs> and I was like, damn, they don't even know what I'm talking about, man. Yeah. Then I was like, well, what y'all think funny? One of the little kids was like, you're the comedian. You, you're supposed to be up like <laughs> It's like, you know what it make you feel like to be a comedian thinking you got it going on and the little kid tell you, you're the comedian. You supposed to be making us laugh, my man, boy. Man, it was getting bad, bro. I ain't never sweated that bad in my life. How long you was up there? Man, every, <laughs> probably five, ten minutes. It felt like an hour. Man, that's a long, that's an hour. You, yeah, it felt like you an hour. You bombing five, ten minutes in like about three hours. Man, I ain't never performed with, with kids. So you didn't look at the contract? You ain't know you was performing in front of kids? Man, hell no. That is like nothing about the age group. I'm thinking youth group like the youth group at my church. My, yeah. youth, my youth choir D. What you wear? You came in there dressed up and everything? I don't know. I don't know. Hey, look at this nigga. Like, who is this nigga? I mean, I had a little button down or whatever. But my point was, the, that, that was the worst crowd. Yes. Trying to do a bunch of little kids and see what happened. I, I felt like I should just be in a clown suit or something. I would have rather been dressed up like fun, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I should have done. They just dress like Spider Man, flipping and shit. You have a bomb so hard, you go off on the people that book you. Yeah, you went out. You got mad at them. I go back into the, to the to the to the youth group uh, leaders or whatever. I was like, man, why y'all didn't tell me this is a bunch of little kids out here? You know, you book a clown for something like this. You book a, a magician. You don't book no stand up. Did you get paid though? Man, I bummed so bad, I told them to keep the other half of the money. I Damn, said, I said, for real, you like, I can't even take it. Yeah, I can't even take that money. I can't even take it. <laughs> that was the first time, yeah. Yeah, so, I, so uh, uh, it was a contest at Comedy, Tennessee. Yeah. And the winner get to open up for see how Was I even in it? I don't think I was in it. Yeah, you was in it. You just lost terribly to me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this was like 09. Yeah, it was 09. And uh, yeah, so you won it. 
And I remember you opened up for Steve Harvey, and uh, it was my mom's birthday weekend, and I brought her. And I made it there late with all the traffic, so I missed your ass. Yeah. I mean, you, what, you, you ripped that jump? I ripped it, man. I ripped it. You was up there when folks were coming in as they were sitting down? That was at the DeSoto Civic Center. Yeah, right? it was in Mississippi. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, yeah, you ripped that jump because I missed it. Yep, yep. I, I ripped it. And it was weird because... Man, when you the open the act for a show like that, nigga, they treat you so dirty. They threw me out there when niggas was still walking and this. sitting down. Like the, the show ain't even started yet. The lights were still low. They was like, Dang. all right, it's your time to go. It's your time to go. I said, what? Man, the lights were still low. People still walking down, going get nachos. And yeah, shit. I hate this shit. But I did that shit and I killed it. Hey, and Steve came out and hollered at me, Steve, you watching this, man. You remember yeah. that? Yeah, you yeah. told me, man. Yeah. What Steve tell you? He told me he was gonna put me on here and did I this remember shit. you took the fish with Steve Harvey and that. <laughs> <laughs> he said, see, you always say, man, you funny. Hey, you funny, man. I like that. You dress nice. Man, I'm yeah. not going to do shit for you, but <laughs> in this moment that we're sharing right now, I'm going to really let you know that uh, you had so a chance see to See, you always still owe you a couple of gigs, man. See, you always. See, see, man, I just, need, I just need a little something, something. something <laughs> man. Like, I ain't going to talk that bad about you. That's sad, man. Yeah. <laughs> you need to goddamn give me a gig, brother. I, this is the corona. It's, 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 me it's and Lovex high- talked about that because afterwards, me and you went to North Memphis to kick it with him. Do you remember that? And we was in the hood. In that store. That in the gambling. store. With, it was clo- was we was dice. inside a closed store in North Memphis. Them niggas in there shooting dice. About to make it. And I'm in North Memphis. This shooting got a dice suit. with low man. They got a suit on it. Nigga, no man said they cuz was scared as a motherfucker. No man quit lying. No man said <laughs> just because a nigga from Cordova over he's scared. And you was more scared than I was. No man. You probably owe some niggas money in that motherfucker the way he talking about it. I'm scared. Nigga, I ain't gonna lie. I was kind of like, I don't think we supposed to be in here. <laughs> like, this store is closed. I wasn't scared. I just didn't look like I was supposed to be. Yeah, because you know. Yeah, I had this. Chuck. Yeah, I had Yeah, a, you got the beans outside. Yeah, I had a white <laughs> beans with a striped suit on. And yeah. Lobez got me in the crevices. Nigga, that's one thing, yeah, I got spoiled early. Nigga, we take me to show, we riding in the beans. Nigga, we, we picking up comedians. You book comedians, bringing them to town, performing at the on it. And I remember you book uh, Double D. And, uh, you know, I used to see Double D on BET Comedy. He was one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. So you booked him to go uh, to do Onyx. And I remember we did the show. I did good that night. And I remember after the show, we arrived somewhere. Double D in the backseat. Find my ass up. I had on a brown blazer. And Double DJ back there just <laughs> going. Say cuz, say cuz, cuz. Ambrose, Ambrose. Nigga, you got your blazer tucked in your pants like kindergarten teacher, huh? Hey, I'm sorry, he just... And I was just so happy to see him because I used to see him on TV all the time. I was just back there laughing my ass off, nigga. But yeah, yeah that shit spoiled up. We riding around in bands, nigga, doing shows and shit. Smoking weed. Yeah. <laughs> Smoking uh, herbal medicine. <laughs> For all the children. Nigga, out yeah, there. that's why we got to give it up to Chuck, nigga. I remember Chuck used to send us on gigs and he ain't even used to be there. I'm talking about, nigga, yeah, hey, we got a show for y'all in Holly Springs. Y'all go on down there and get it. Nigga, we down there. They got some VIP rooms set up. Anybody that know Chuck, no guy. The dumb shows that Chuck used to throw, boy. Sometimes huh. you can get the best show or the worst show of your life. Man, Man it was always yeah, perfect. yeah, 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 yeah. I remember the last me, you and Lomax did, and uh, I think I went up first, and then I think you went up and Lomax closed that gym. That was like early on in my career. I was like, God damn, those niggas up the nigga destroyed that gym. Was that Jackson, Tennessee? Yeah, it might have been one of them gigs. Was it the night Lomax, uh, we had got like a whole hotel room? We had got like a man, one time me and Lomax did a show at Jackson, and we had got a room at this hotel in Jackson. And the it was a weird hotel because if you could open the window, you could stand out on the roof and walk down the roof and there'd be other hotel windows and stuff. So we had got out on the roof and opened, we went down the little walkway and opened every window that was on there. So we had ended up getting like almost the whole floor, like every room. So y'all just walking home. in and out of different hotel rooms? Man, we had got in every room on that hotel floor that night. And we was uh, selling rooms to people from the comedy club. We're like, you want a room, man? We got a room for you up here, man. 
For real, so y'all go in through the roof and open the door. Man. Yeah. For real. And I saw, I saw low back. <laughs> <laughs> And I was one of my roll back, low back. At first, I just thought it was just fun. Of, you know, we were just drunk, yeah, having yeah. all the rooms. But then low back, I realized he was running game on me. He was opening up all the rooms because he had this real big old girl. I can't even remember. But some girl he said was paying her his phone bill or something. <laughs> he just tells that boy. Yeah, it's a real, some real big old girl. And then uh, low back to the room. He, he tried to find him a room for him and her to hide while I'm looking like I'm. Oh, uh, so they get so he yeah, didn't, don't he hit. keep me busy while he so he can sneak in one of the rooms and get the big girls without letting me see. I back. think I knew but, that girl. He used to mess with. She didn't come to come. But he don't know. I walked and I saw him with the curtains and I saw. <laughs> you saw I saw you, little man. You saw him in the fucking big girl. The, man, I saw him, man. I saw him. I, I didn't tell him. I don't think I never Dude, told him. Oh, so he know it now. It came out on the show. You know now, little Max. That's why you were trying to keep him busy. So I remember that big girl, too, because she used to come to a couple of shows. Mm -hmm. She used to come to every show. Used to pay his phone bill. Yeah, yeah, she just paid my phone bill. Like, yeah. No, nah, nigga, she doing more than that, nigga. <laughs> yeah, I seen you, love. I seen you. Uh, so uh, you opened up for Steve Hart. That, that, well, that wasn't your first big big show. Right after it was. That. No, Steve was the first show that I got paid, for real. Oh, how much you get paid for that? It was like $100 a minute. How many minutes you done? Like five. Oh, they gave you 500 for that uh, when you opened up CR? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that was about the radio station, 103.5. Shout out to 103.5. I think, uh, dang, what was the guy that hooked me up with that? Marvin. Marvin. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah Have yeah, you said, guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah he cool. Marvin. That's still my Shout dude. Shout out to Marvin, man. I appreciate that. that, that Coming dude. from Cordova. What first TV appearance? Bounce TV? Yeah. Nah. Comedian Keish was just up. It was that the gospel gent that didn't make it to TV? Right. That was the first. Me and. I don't know if you know, I mean, they might, yeah, Raynard Hirsch and yeah. uh, Griff, McGriff was on there, and uh, not McGriff, but Griff was on there, and uh, who else was on there? Did Comedian you know? Keisha from Memphis. Comedian Keisha? She said she was on there. there. I don't remember that. Well, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I guess, I don't know, I guess. Yeah, she said y'all didn't get paid because they, uh, no, we got paid. afterwards. Oh, we got paid. That night? No, I mean, we got paid for it. We were supposed to get doing during the show, but it just never aired. Yeah, so they recorded it, and she said yeah. she'd come back home, check it on, and it didn't air. So that was the yeah. first. So you like, God damn, that was going to be my first TV appearance. So then second what? Bounce TV? Second was Bounce TV. Rodney Perry. With Rodney Perry. I had, when they had the auditions, I was out there in Stardome, and uh, Rodney Perry and them had came through. I was performing that weekend. And they came through and did the audition. I had auditioned for it. I really had a good set. I don't know why I didn't get picked for it. Yeah, Bounce TV. That came on Bounce TV. What year was that? That had to be like, oh, no, that had to be like 2012. 12. Yeah, yeah, 12, like 12. that. That was on Bounce TV. Yeah, Bounce TV was when I was probably 32. And you was in Atlanta. You were staying in Atlanta then. They filmed yeah. that, you I was staying in Atlanta. When well, you came back to me. I remember you had the... Uh, a showing party at Prohibition. For my beautiful woman, Jennifer. <laughs> you got a shout out. Yeah, yeah. I remember I came. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your daddy was there at that one and shit. He's like, yeah, yeah, that yeah, nigga owed me some money. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, was like, I ain't even said, hey, yeah, 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 your friend owed me some money right there. <laughs> so Bounce TV, then uh, what came after that? After Bounce TV, I did Heart of the City with Kevin Hart. That's the last television. Heart of the City, Kevin Hart. Y'all remember that? In the, uh, I came to that one too. You was in, I was like, Cub, what you gonna do? That nigga like, nigga, I don't even know. I'm looking at you like, nigga. I know, right? I feel like I did the wrong joke too. I mean, I yeah, that, that Teresa like, Matthew, that long joke. It was too fucking long. I was like, I said, Cub, you don't know what you gonna do, nigga. Kevin Hart is in the building, nigga. <laughs> I think nigga. Ambrose probably messed me up, get me all, all hyped. No, I was like, like, nigga, you got a set? And nigga, Cub was like, Nigga, no. <laughs> but where have you ever known me to know what I was saying? I thought you had, I always thought you had a set. Out of all the years you know me, you ain't never known me to have nothing together. But that shit be that. coming out like you had a set, goddamn. Because I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think Vivacious, uh, no, the uh, Johnny Bad Drash thing, I think he had probably about the best set on that joint. Oh, yeah, Johnny, Johnny did his thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vivacious did pretty good. You did it. I was like, cousin, uh, like, he ain't, he ain't do his best. You, you said that shit fast as a motherfucker. Vivacious did pretty good. Vivacious did pretty good. She did pretty good. Yeah, yeah. 
Mo, Mo, Mo did, Mo did that. Man, you just saying that shit because this shit recorded. This nigga, look, look, <laughs> hey, let me show you what a nigga I said Mo did, all yeah. right. Nigga, when, a nigga, when a nigga lie, he gonna drink his drink <laughs> right after that. Like, Mo did hey, that. Yo, you know what, you lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, man, I just, man, I come from some funny motherfuckers, man, watching you, Prescott, you, Henry Coleman, Lomax. Nigga, just, yeah. But so what's up with the, the you ain't you talking about me? This ain't no interview for me. This is a podcast, man. Yeah. What happened to uh? What's up with your ginger root? Ambrose selling this uh, burdock root. Did, right? uh, did you bought two bottles? I bought two bottles of it. I'm gonna tell you, I ain't gonna lie. I didn't feel like it's it's doing something. I don't know what the hell it's doing, but it's doing something. See, and you gotta make sure you take it right. This is uh oh, I got some new. My boy Mike Jane called me, he said, uh, cause he bought an order of the, the bladder rat. You got the sea moss and burdock root. Right. This sea moss and bladder rat. And they called me and said, hey man, this must be some new shit here. You guys say, yeah, this sea moss and bladder rat. I said, man, that shit be at me horn the motherfucker. <laughs> I said, well nigga, at least you married, at least you get to have sex at least one time a week, nigga. <laughs> I was like, nigga, uh, I ain't got nobody, nigga. I had to stop taking this shit so much. But this is a, a, a sea moss and bladder rat tincture right here. Mm. Yeah, just so that, I didn't get the bladder right. Yeah, this the new one. So you soak soak it in uh, 80 proof alcohol for six weeks, man. Let that shit drain. And uh, oh, what Mike James do? So you take two dropper full, put it under your tongue. You got to fill the droppers up two up, put them under your tongue for at least 90 seconds. So your salivary glands take it to your bloodstream, straight to your bloodstream. He said he put it under his tongue and just go run errands around the house in the morning. And so that shit probably stay out this tub for about two or three minutes. It's working. It's and then something. he swallowed. You still got some? Hell yeah, I still got both of my balls. Oh, yeah, you better say take it every day. I take it every day, but I don't, um, I didn't know you were supposed to make the whole flask fill up. I just, I just squeeze it or whatever. Put it in the drop. No, yeah, I just do, I do two droplets. And put it on your tongue? Yeah, whatever comes yeah, in. Yeah, you're supposed to fill it up two drop of full. Yeah. Oh, okay. All yeah, right, two man. yeah, yeah, two full. But yeah, that's that shit. Yeah, man. so everybody buying this stuff, it, it, I tell you, it do work. It, Comedianambrose.com. It then I got my I was gonna do this before the show ended. And then I got my comedy special. This, this nigga, I mean we riding around with that nigga like, hey, he had a DVD, his first DVD, and they like, hey bro. Yeah, get you some beer to call, man. I was like, okay. Now writing this shit down. Okay, beer to call. <laughs> I, 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 in my head, I'm writing this shit down. He said, you gotta get your beer to call. And he said, then you gotta get your DVD. I was like, okay, you gotta get a DVD. <laughs> and he did everything. You doing good, nigga. I got a beer to call. Got a DVD. Mm-hmm. Nigga, how many DVDs? I just told Greg. I mean, no, I just told Suavo. How many DVDs do you have floating around? I know I got at least four DVDs, and I don't even own them no more. And how many copies do you think you done sold to all four of them motherfuckers floating around? Hundreds. Hundreds <laughs> nigga, of copies, man. Nigga, I'm talking about, nigga, this is my third. So I got three DVDs, and then this one here on a one gigabyte USB drive. So this is like my fourth one. So I know DVDs, nigga. I probably got about 5,000. Because, you know, you re up once that honey gone, nigga. I probably got thousands of DVDs just sitting in folks' house right now, like Master P, straight out the If you got Get Rich or Die Laughing. That was your man, first one, yeah. You that was a good one, too. DVD, I need that DVD. Any fan of mine man, that got I that DVD, that I need real. that DVD. Oh, you ain't got it? I ain't got it no more. That's the, is that it. the church joint? No. No, that's the joint where um, I'm, on, I'm at the radio station with Corey Holcomb. Oh, damn. No, I don't think I got that one. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a throwback. Chuck was on it. Um, get rich or die last. Get rich or die last. That's the first one. That's what was your first, second? My very, my very first one. My second one was um, my second one was called um, the Clean Enough Comedy Show. That was that nigga. Hold on, hold on. We gotta talk about this. This that the one you did at Comedy Tennessee? That's why I did it. We well, did that like once a month. No, I just did it one time and sold it out. So hold on. So you brought all your church for our kind of man. I think I remember sitting back. And I was like, hey man, what what you gotta do to uh, get on this show? You like nigga, you gotta be clean. I was like, shit. I was like nigga. In my head, I was like nigga, I can be clean, nigga. You put me on that motherfucker. But it was you, Small Five. Raynard, uh, I remember going to that show. Yep, and uh, Lenny Kane was on. Lenny it. Kane did the poor. I remember that. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I wanted to get on that motherfucker. That's so bad. Yeah, and I think I did like two hours at night. Like, because you headline. Yeah, no, 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 no. I hosted. 
Okay. And Small Fire headline. But I do, I remember going back through the DVD and I was doing like 15 to 20 minutes every Yeah, host, I remember that. Every whole spot. I remember that. I had heard you do one joke that I ain't never heard before. That's when you, your mama don't curse, but she'll say uh, other words when you bring your report card home. Like, yeah, ah! She'll yeah, see a yeah, D yeah. on your fuck. I'll be like, ah! <laughs> ah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I that. Like, I know exactly what my mama would say. That boy got to Yeah, that was a good show. I thought you were going to do it again, but then Comedy to Tennessee closed down when you was going to do that gospel thing again. Yeah, that was really my calling. I should have stuck with gospel calling. Yeah, nigga, it ain't too late. Shit. It ain't too late, but Let's yeah. put it, nigga. You know I can do clean comedy but, uh, now. I do a gospel show now, nigga. They going to click on that joint in the next three videos. going to be like, yeah, so a motherfucker. <laughs> Smoking bloods and Smoking shit. Weed, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I went too far to turn back now. But no, that man, shit, we can put a comedy. You know that'd be good since COVID started. Nigga, we get a church. That's what we are gonna do. We are gonna do the too far to turn back now Christian comedy tour. <laughs> too far to turn, nigga. I didn't know that the preacher that got caught cheating, John Gray. Yeah. He was a Christian comic at first. I mean, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know who John Gray. Yeah, is. he used to come to Joel uh, Osteen Church to do Christian comedy before he became a pastor and shit. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even know that shit. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, man. We man, we got it. What story we comedians got? Comedians have a hard time keeping women. Have you noticed that? Comedians have a hard time keeping women? Every comedian I know. Yeah, I'm by my work. goddamn self now, uh, Cletus. Yeah, I know what you mean. You by your goddamn self? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, bro, you probably, I think I like it. Like, I think I I'm think alone. You, you really searching for Miss Wright, and that's where you met her. Oh, yeah, I know you're that. Actually yeah. looking for, you actually think it's something good for you out there. I just want a woman that ain't gonna cheat on me, cause like nigga, well keep looking, nigga. No, it's girls that that won't That'd cheat on you, but you're not that nigga. You the nigga that get cheated on. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you and I know that. You ain't and that that's that. yeah, they'll cheat on me. Yeah, they'll cheat on but you. But you know what? I ain't no, gonna... no, you know what? They won't cheat on you. The ones you pick will cheat on you. Uh, you, you pick it. You pick it. I be picking the wrong one. Yeah. That's you why pick... you gotta stop picking the woman and let God pick one for you. Does that make sense? No. No, no, no. You got to stop picking the woman. You got to let your money be able to pick the woman that you Oh, want. okay. You got you to you gotta have enough money for the woman of your caliber. Oh, that's what uh, Corey Hoffman said. This, this, is the, this is the lesson for the day. Are your pockets attracting the women that, of, that you want? Oh. <laughs> Next on the 3811 for show. 3811 for show. Yeah, is I just your, answered that. No, uh, it's not. Are your pockets attracting the, the women, women that you want? You want? No, okay. they are not. Nigga, that's a, that's a rhetorical question right there. Yeah, nigga, see, yeah, yeah, a lot of that. people don't want to look at themselves to realize reasons why they But you know what? Them. I'm not even looking for nobody. You what? Yeah, I ain't looking for nobody. Why you look for I'm happy by myself, bro. You just said that you you was look, you were sounding real disappointed when no. you were talking about having sex once a week. Now you sounded real devastated. No, when you're about man. You know what? I am more focused them. when I am by myself. Focus. Yeah, I get shit done when I'm by myself. But are you fulfilled? Uh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, I fulfill my goddamn self. <laughs> Yeah. See, my mama said you gotta know how to please yourself before you please somebody else. Yeah. That just sounds like somebody that masturbates a lot. That sounds like somebody. <laughs> <laughs> that that sounds like some a nigga that don't get sex a lot. Was like, yeah, <laughs> nigga would fine. come up some shit to try to justify. Yeah. Like no, nah, you know what? I usually I usually see when COVID hit, fucked me out because I'd be on the road. I usually. You know what I'm saying? Do it, you know, find a legend, knock it off on the road. When I come home, I don't want to date nobody here because I know I get too comfortable and mm -hmm. want to be in a relationship. So I usually don't date when I'm in my hometown. You don't. But since COVID came, then I'm here. I'm like, shit, damn, dude. Do, yeah. you, do you still have girls from like cities you done perform? Yeah, there? yeah. You yeah have friends you that come out and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a drive. Drive? I mean, like, you ever like you know meet a girl at a you know at a show and then. You drive to go get her. Like, you know, like, all right, it's difference between driving from here to Oklahoma because you're getting $800 or you're getting $1,000 right. or whatever. But it's another thing to drive from here to home, Oklahoma just because you're trying to get some pictures. Oh, no, I did shit when you were younger. Yeah, younger. Not yeah, old. Yeah. It's not that serious because, like I said, I can please myself at home, man. Yeah, that's right. Now, that's women, if you want to know if a man really want to be with you, that's how you do 
See how far he'll drive just to have sex. <laughs> I'm not driving no goddamn <laughs> way. If you can get a man to drive over two hours, he love you. No, okay, I did that when I was younger. Drove three hours to a girl, then you get that, she on up here. You ever did that? Hell no. Yeah, I did that. Uh, that any woman know not to play with me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I did that before. I was like, why the fuck do you... Uh, Don't play with me like that. That's, that is like... <laughs> That's playing with a man feelings right there. You playing with your life. You ain't playing with <laughs> You be like, somebody finna fuck around this motherfucker right <laughs> Somebody, you better go wake your auntie up in that back, cause somebody, <laughs> somebody <laughs> think out there. <laughs> this is how you know Ambrose from North Memphis. This is how you can wake your auntie up. Somebody, go, somebody finna get it. This might go hit anybody. You wake your auntie up back there. Your auntie back there. I ain't never drove that guy that way. I ain't never drove. Now, it's some old nigga. Please, I yeah, wish I would. It ain't that serious, no goddamn boy. Now, I like when a woman, you ever had a woman coming to town for you? Yeah, that's, that's that's good right there. When she come bring it to you. But the, even them type of women, it, it make you wonder a little bit, like, what's make, why is she so garbage in her own city that she willing to drive <laughs> all the way to me? Like, is this, is this the, the, the sick bitch in the city oh, come to see me? Or hold what? on. Let me tell you. One day, uh, uh, What's the dude in Mississippi used to book shows? D D D D Sorrell. D Sorrell. D Sorrell. He booked me and Pierre in Jackson, Tennessee at this uh this uh what you call? And uh it's just like event center. I featured for Pierre. I mm -hmm. did good. And uh, after the show, you know how they had a little VIP room for us and shit, had a liquor set up. So I'm in there, Pierre, uh, D Sorrell coming in and say, hey, Ambrose, is uh somebody wanna meet you? I'm like, shit, okay. Yeah, I go out there, I was like, who, who is it? Hey, it, and I remember looking at her. She was sitting like on the left side of me when I was on stage. She was out there laughing and shit, and yeah. uh, it was her. So she came up to me, you know what I'm saying? I was like, hey, come on in the VIP room. I was like, you want something to drink? Gave her something. She was a nice looking old woman, too. She was older than me, but she was pretty. She was pretty. So we talking, we kept in contact, and uh, she, she, had, she was from Boonville, Mississippi. I can't remember her name, but goddamn it, if you out there, Hell I've been no. thinking about you. Boonville. Every, she's from Boonville, Mississippi. I never heard her. She had a twin sister, and she came to Memphis one time. I don't know why I'm telling this story, but we were talking about women. But she came to Memphis, and uh, uh, yeah, she stayed at that Super 8 hotel right there on Lamar, down 78. And man, we had a good time that weekend, boy. You did a tour. Yeah, yeah that was good. You did it too. She came over my daddy's house, you and my daddy's girlfriend was a crackhead, and she came in, we walked into my room, my daddy's crackhead girlfriend said, ooh, she pretty. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> but, okay. hey, that woman, I don't know your name, but if you out there, and then she always wanted me to come to Boonville, Mississippi, but... And you I didn't never go? did, cause I hate her. I, I was like, damn, I should have went. You had a fine job from Boom Mill. Should have went to. It was like only an hour or something. I should have went. That a crankhead approved. And this woman was, I'm talking about, you know, a sexual older woman, like send you pictures of a lingerie, and like, she was a sexual older woman. But she came to the casino in Tunica, one of her cousins one time. She was like, hey, I'm coming to Tunica. Come here. And I came there in the room. I met her cousin, and her cousin was like. Uh, Y'all want to come down to gamble with me? Old nigga, like, uh, no. <laughs> but I don't know if that woman out there, but I forgot her name. But yeah, I miss you. I bet her ass look like Lady Eloise. No, hello, no, because she was pretty. Marcus, she was pretty. She was, you <laughs> sure you just went on that hand and say hard? No, you? she was pretty, bro. She was pretty. That's a pretty old woman. I still been thinking about. <laughs> Uh, let's hey, get four time right now. Let's get everybody your uh, social media info, man. All right, you can find me on Cletus Allen Jr. That's C L E A T I S A L L E N J R. I did say R. Mm -hmm. That's on all of them. That's on Instagram. Twitter. That's on Twitter. That's on. No, ex Twitter is Cousin Cletus. Okay. That was my first name. How many names you can change in this game? I just kept Ambrose Jones throughout the whole thing. What cuz come from? Cuz, my aunt gave me that a long time ago when I was funny, when I was a little kid. And I was like nine years old. And she was like, you're going to be a comedian. You grow up and you need to call yourself cuz. 
Hey, that's how I got my name. Yeah, why yeah. she say you need to call yourself Cuz? Because I was her cousin. She was like, every time I see you, I be like, Cuz, so funny. Like, so that's where you got Cuz, That's bro? where I got Cuz. Yeah, bro. you only heard that here Aunt on the goddamn 3811 Fun Show. Faith Swift gave me my name. What's her she name? She might even not even know this. My Aunt Faith. She's, she's, okay. She's my boss auntie. Uh, she yeah. got an elevator in her house. Same Aunt Faith with Damn, elevator he remembers? in house there in Cargillville. See, see, they ain't gonna stand again with this car. And she had an elevator in the house. She had an elevator. That's her fate. That's my ball in this one. At what age was you when you seen it? Oh, no, this recently. Oh. Uh, this, I mean, it wasn't recently, but probably like five years ago. She I had an elevator in the house, bro. She had an elevator, bro. I didn't even know nothing about that. That was my, that's my first time seeing a real live elevator in the crib. I, I would think, like, having an elevator in your house, your light bill would be high in the motherfucker. <laughs> I think having an elevator in the house, you probably ain't using it, motherfucker. <laughs> Where you going? You can just take the stairs. You ain't got no but two flights of stairs to it's take. They ain't got no kids. It's just them there. It's just two people. Oh, that's, yeah. that's selfish. Uh, <laughs> huh? She said, you know what this house is missing? An uh, elevator. That's something to go up and down. Uh, man. All right. Hey, before we get out of here, baby, we ain't, we ain't How got... How long have we been on, on camera? We about 40. Oh, 45 minutes, dude. Oh, what's up, man? It don't seem like we've been here that long, man. You got to say, hey, I got to get the guests to say, look at the camera and say, hey, thank y'all for tuning in. This is 3811 Fun Show. Thank you for tuning in to 3811 Fun Show. Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, okay, sorry. Thank you for tuning thank in. You for tuning thank you for tuning in. Thank you. 3811 Fun Show. Thank you. 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 Thank he what? He would lie to your face. Low Max? <laughs> you hey. never know, Low. Oh, yes, I have. Hey, yeah, Low, Low Max, you still saw me come up my house and be paid by goddamn bedroom. He still ain't got him do. He said, but, so hey. you, Faith ain't got him started. You know that? Okay, him what? Started drinking? Started in comedy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. I didn't know that. R.I.P. R.I.P. So Sign your favorite. Faith but yeah, man, I always man. appreciate you, man, taking me under your wing. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate that, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Salute. We got to get something popping off. You know, COVID just ended, so we got to get this church church show going. We still got a church show to do. You know that, don't we? Nigga, no. That pastor called me the other day. What pastor? That show that we was booked right before the uh, COVID. Oh, uh, yeah. Office. We still got to do that? What did he say? He was just saying he want to know we still available. He was like, you just, he don't know when they go. What you it, say? I told him we ready whenever you want it. Uh, that time you and Lomax, since we talking about Lomax, what's that story about when y'all, y'all near death experience? Oh, uh, Lomax. <clears throat> he got beef for Lomax. Lomax my partner from <laughs> North Memphis, y'all don't know Lomax. Shout out to Lomax. Me and Lomax gonna do a show in Nashville. <laughs> I ride with Lomax. Now, when you're young, you don't really have the, <laughs> the ability to make judgment calls like you should right. like you would if and you were you high then you probably were high yeah like low max like when i was riding with folks i didn't know nothing like looking at tires or asking do they have insurance or shit like that you know like you know things that you think responsible people with vehicles gonna have anyway we run with low max low max ain't got no meat on his tires we coming back from a i mean from nashville <laughs> Man, it started raining. When it started raining, Lomax truck started doing shit. I ain't never ever seen a truck do. That just started. That just started like doing some Rick James. You said switching. That nigga yeah, truck that just switch. started switching down the highway and shit. Then all of a sudden, you know a nigga. Know, you know a nigga that know his car messed up. Cause one time the car like went whoop whoop like swept way over there. Then that man looked at me in the, in the seat like this like. Then he said some shit that you knew he was lying about. The man gonna say, "This joint ain't never did that shit before." <laughs> <laughs> he look at you like he was lying. Yeah, I was like, "You knew when it started raining," because I can tell when it started raining the way he started sitting up on his seat. Yeah, he was getting, he was he, racing himself. He knew that raggedy motherfucker was finna start slipping. Hold on, what kind of truck was it? Man, it was a Explorer Sport. It wasn't even a real Explorer. It was a two-door Explorer. Oh, it was one wow. of just, God, was a, It damn. was a little compact Ford Explorer. But anyway, me and Lomax fishtailed on the highway, flew off the expressway, off into some type of ditch where you wouldn't, if you wouldn't have been behind us, you wouldn't have known we flew off. Yeah, we almost killed ourselves. A tree, we, a tree stopped. How far did y'all go down? Very far. We had to crawl up out. Did we y'all have y'all seatbelts on? 
That's what we had our seatbelt on. So as you were going down, what's going through your head as y'all motherfucking going down? Lord, this? please don't let my valuable life die with this nigga. <laughs> what was he doing when y'all was going down? What was he doing? Being low, man. Just ready. talking shit. Being prepared to die. He was ready. He to always. Die. He from the military. He yeah. always ready to die. Yeah, this ready. shit excite him. Yeah. <laughs> Cause they're like, oh my god. Low back, but I'm like, I'm gonna die with cool. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, I'm gonna die with low back. So y'all down there? Did somebody come get y'all up? We crawled up. Y'all got out the seatbelt, so the car crashed. Did y'all y'all didn't hurt y'all self? You ain't bump your head. When niggas ain't got insurance, you don't get hurt. <laughs> you, you know better than the gear. You, <laughs> you ain't got no insurance, you ain't got no goddamn business getting hurt. God you, watch over his children knew, and his food. You knew you ain't had no insurance, insurance. before you flew off the cliff. What? So y'all didn't get no scratch. Your head didn't hit the steering wheel or nothing, bro. I couldn't afford to get scratched. <laughs> I couldn't afford to get bruised. <laughs> nigga. I got this nigga did it all the way down there, and y'all walked. Y'all just took your seatbelt off, crawled out the window, and walked y'all way back up. You wanna know how niggas with no insurance act when they get a wreck? We got out the car after the wreck, climbed up the grassy, muddy hill. It's to still the, raining. To the highway, and just started walking like we ain't done shit. <laughs> That's two niggas. That's two niggas from Memphis with no insurance. We just walking down the highway. The state trooper pulled us up and said, hey, did y'all have an accident? We said, no. Nah. <laughs> oh, no, no, sir. What about the white folks? You said it was the white folks. Uh... White people would stop behind us. Look, they saw <laughs> When they saw us crawling out and saw that we was black, they were like, okay, you guys are all right, bye. And they just drove off. White folks be scared of folks. So, well, y'all got out. Y'all walking down the E-way. Police stopped y'all. Y'all got to that? Y'all like, nah. Actually, the police put us in the... Now, this is the thing. This is how you know Lowbacks were from the north. Because the police, the state trooper pulled over to help us. But to drive us to the nearest gas station to get a record for the car, we had to get in the back seat. Lomax didn't want to get in the back seat. Because <laughs> he didn't know if he would be able to get out. Get out! <laughs> so what happened? He was like, nah, y'all go ahead. And I'm gonna stay here. <laughs> no, he finally talked low back to the back seat, and so we both sat in the back seat. We we go into the exit. He like, I'll just take you up to this exit up here. Yeah. Me and low back to the back seat. Like we going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Soon as he run my name, nigga, we both. Y'all going, going to jail? jail. I know low back probably had warrants on him. Uh, nigga, yeah. I remember the first time me and him riding the Batesville, Mississippi. Nigga, I'm the one went to jail. Oh no, no. What you go to jail for? License fucked up. And he calling everybody. Everybody calling him. What's up, man? Me and Ambrose got pulled up. They're like, nigga, who finna go to jail? You? He's like, no, nigga, Ambrose. <laughs> <laughs> everybody bragging and shit. He bragging and shit. No, nigga, Ambrose finna go to jail. Yeah, that's fucked up. Did y'all have weed in the truck then? I know y'all had some weed and liquor. I know Lil Max had a bar. Nah, Cause we got pulled over. Police pulled me to the back of the police car. I look, I look over back up to my car in front of the police car. I see Lomax throwing the ball out <laughs> into the tent. <laughs> I don't think Lomax had no weed. I think, okay. I think we was. So you were sober? You wouldn't hide nothing? Yeah, because this was the end of the trip. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, they, we probably had smoked all the weed by Well, then. God is good, man. God is good, man. God damn. All the time. Yes, he is, man. Shit. All Let's the just time. still be here, man. Shit. Mr. Yes, Tennessee. Right. We still roll. 3811 Fun Show. Memphis, Tennessee. Y'all, uh, shit. Hit that like and subscribe button on the goddamn show. Subscribe to the 3811 Fun Show. You got YouTube? What's your YouTube? Cletus Allen. You still on, uh, you got your website? You got the website no more? At, at the web, motherfuckers don't even use websites. It's like, nigga, call me. Uh, or, or websites face- just then became. Facebook obsolete. messaged me. Nigga, I don't need no way. What I need a website for, nigga? Just- <laughs> hey, you ever uh, be with your girl and you get that Facebook call? That, doo, 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 that Facebook call, you don't know who the fuck that it is. That shit be loud the motherfucker. You be like, I hope this a promoter. Man, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what I do. Yeah. Well, all right, man, we out of here, I guess. This is a 3811 photo show with Ambrose Jones. Chopping it up, man. That was fun, man. Chopping it up with Cletus. Uh, we going to have to come back and just uh, do one about, just talking about some, you know, topics, daily topics and shit like that. Post that, and I'll let you know when they jump. Yeah, that's it, though, man. 3811 Fun Show. This motherfucker's still, we done went an hour. We done went 53 minutes. Ah, right, we good. 
Ah, uh, you gotta that's go like, now. That's, like, that's my baby mama. Let me yeah. see, man. It's probably hello, hello. Oh no, he got, he got, the, he got his song. Mom, hello, J Mom. Hey, where's Sean? What you say, woman? We still, we still recording. What you doing? I'm on a podcast. As long as you're okay. Well, why wouldn't I be okay? Because you didn't do what you said you was doing today. What did I say I was doing today? Hello. Yeah, Can we talk when you get finished? Call me back. I'll think about it. Hey, hey, nigga, baby mama, can you see how quiet it got in this motherfucker? <laughs> 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 uh, nigga, it was a fly, was flying around. Even that nigga landed like, okay, that's that nigga, baby mama, nigga. <laughs> Everybody just froze, nigga. You, <laughs> you know why niggas freeze like that when their baby mama call? Because it's almost like you can feel the money. Coming out your bank account. I need, I need. So you thought she was gonna ask for something? I know it's about to be something. You, it's like every time. <laughs> you know, it's like when your baby mama call you. It's like a bill collector. <laughs> you know you owe. You know you owe. Yeah, you know you owe. <laughs> you know you owe. <laughs> and you got to listen to this motherfucker tell you. Hey, I was gonna you know. say something, but I saw how quiet you were. I was like, shit, I better be quiet too. <laughs> this is. Serious. <laughs> this is serious, nigga. I was like, oh shit. This nigga oh, might be a hundred thousand in the home. <laughs> I'm glad she didn't say that. Like, uh, nigga, uh, where that hundred fifty at you supposed to been bringing over here yesterday? I'm glad she didn't say that like that, but she. Right, well, hey, man, it's shout out to all the people getting DoorDash right now, man. Everybody that get DoorDash and Uber Eats and trust perfect strangers with your food that you about to put in I your I ain't mouth. never did a DoorDash, bro. Shout out to you. Man. I cook, so I ain't never did a DoorDash. I ain't never did a DoorDash either. You know why, though? Why? Because it's too many little nasty-ass little jumps. Yeah. I know that do DoorDash. Yeah, I know if I did that, I'd be eating nigga fries. I know I'd take a couple fries out there. Especially <laughs> makeup. Did. You know how many girls giving head and shit and fucking not even taking no bath and getting up out of the bed and going to DoorDash? Well, get your food! <laughs> That's what you put! You ain't like that at home, oh, fuck it, dude. Like, uh oh, gotta go. Let me... So many broke, ratchet little chicks. She just had a goddamn dick in her just, head. Just she, got through sucking some She just yeah. held your bag. Here you go. But yeah, uh, here's your food, sir. <laughs> I didn't use any hand sanitizer. Yeah, I don't trust that shit, bro. Yeah, I don't do DoorDash. I did do Uber for a while until uh, this blind lady tried to get in my car with her dog. <laughs> I said, hey, look, you know, black folk don't let no more. I was like, right, hey. right, right. I was like, excuse me, like, you can't get in here with it. Well, Uber said that y'all can. I said, Miss like, A, I don't care what Uber said. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was like, you're not getting in my truck with this goddamn dog. But it's like Uber and I, Amber. <laughs> I said, now, do you want to go and leave the dog? You need to take your pick. Who want to go? How you going to take a blind lady to see that dog? You ain't shit, nigga. <laughs> You I said, I said, you do you want to go or your dog going to go? Because so, both of y'all cannot go. So now that she get to where she trying to get, she so, ain't got no my last around. Uber run. Uber, they, she got talk, called in the Uber. They got mad at me. I was like, fuck it, man. I hope Uber finds your ass. They find, yeah, yeah. They turned me off for a while, but I ain't drove them in a minute. See, bro. a lot of comics don't know. Like, me and Ambrose, we ain't done to the reality. We, we got jobs. Like, niggas that... I actually, they furloughing me right now, bro. Yeah, you finna get furloughed? Hell yeah, man. They furloughing me. Why? Shit, shit, shit not going? They not, airlines ain't getting no business like that? Yeah, like it's supposed to be. Trump ain't bailing us out. Trump. Oh, he ain't giving the airlines no money? Trump, why you ain't bailing us out? Trump? Trump? Bullshit. Keeping all the money for your goddamn self. When them loans came out, don't you know Kanye got like three point something million? Well, this nigga is rich. The rich get richer and the poor, poor get, get 